This lecture is going to talk about the most commonly used test in statistics, the two-sample t-test. And this is a test to compare means. Comparing the means of two samples. There's two variations of this thing. <clears throat> the first one is to compare two independent samples, and this is usually called the two-sample t-test. So we can do a comparison, less than, greater than, it's greater than, or not equal. <clears throat> and there's two variations of this test. The only variation invented by Gossett assumes the samples have equal variances, like this one, or the newer version, sometimes called the Satterthwaite approximation, takes care of situations where there are unequal variances, like this one. The second version is a little more general, and of course includes the first as a degenerate, degenerate case, but the first version bears studying uh, since a variation of this is going to show up a little bit later in this course of lectures. So let's talk about the one with equal variances. Equal variance is often assumed in experimental settings since the subjects are drawn at random from a homogeneous population. So the only difference is the treatment and we're going to assume that variation is inherent in subjects not in the treatment. So since we get two estimates of the variance from the two samples, we need to somehow comp uh, <clears throat> compile those together. And so what we do is we form what's called a pooled variance. It's a weighted average. So we take each individual variance, weight it by its degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom show up numerator and denominator, and that gives us the pooled variance. Then the test statistic, the test statistic is simply the difference in the sample means divided by the standard error with contributions from both samples. Degrees of freedom for the overall test is, is easy. It's the denominator in the pooled variance. So it's sample size. Some of the sample size is minus two. Let's look at an example. Someone actually thought to ask the question, does talking to a patient while taking his blood pressure elevate the reading? I know I find that a little bit annoying when I go to visit the doctor. So here's an experiment, balanced experiment, eight patients with each treatment. Eight patients had their blood pressure taken with talking. The average blood pressure reading was 108.975 with a variance of 4.74. Eight more patients had their blood pressure taken without talking. Their average was a little bit lower, 102.25, and the variance 5.39. We'd like to conduct a one-sided test at the 5% level. That is to say, <clears throat> do we think the average for the with talk group is bigger than the average for the without talk? So with uh, 14 degrees of freedom, the critical value is 1.76. So from the pooled variance, degrees of freedom times variance in both cases, add them up, divide by 14. Our pooled variance is 5.065. We calculate our t-statistic as the difference of the two means divided by the standard error of the sum. So there's our 5.056 times the reciprocals of each of the sample sizes. And we work this T statistic out and we get 5.776. And so we conclude that T is greater than the critical value, so reject the null hypothesis. Talking elevates blood pressure. Maybe. Seems to substantiate it anyway. What about the unequal variance case? In this case, no assumption is made about variances 
so we don't have to worry about homogeneity or any of that kind of stuff. Test statistic is very simple. Uh, we're basically just going to add this, the variance contributions for, for the two groups. So we'll do something like this. Um, but the degrees of freedom is a little bit odd. So our test statistic looks like this. Difference of the variance is the square root of the two contributions uh, <clears throat> to the standard error. And so we just see that that's the respective variance divided by the sample size. Here's the degree of freedom calculation where it gets crazy. So we take each of those variance components, add them and square, the, square the result, and then divide it by this oddball fraction down here. Now, what's surprising about this is this need not be an integer. Okay, the t distribution doesn't care. That's okay. But it's hard to explain. in terms of degrees of freedom. Don't ask me. <clears throat> it would take us two hours to figure out how that works. So let's look at an example. Somebody doesn't like getting tennis elbows, so they ask the question, do oversized tennis rackets deliver less stress to the elbow than conventional ones? So we wanted to look close at oversized rackets so we had an unbalanced design, simply meaning that the two sample sizes are different. We had 33 intermediate players were randomly assigned, assigned to use oversized rackets, while 12 were assigned conventional ones. And we wanted to test this hypothesis. Okay, so less stress for the oversized rackets. That's our that's our theory. That's our research hypothesis. We. Measured force on the elbow after impact five times for each player and recorded the averages. Then we summarized. So basically these means are averages of averages. Um, there's our sample sizes and here's our variances. We see that the means are quite different, but we see also that the variances are very different, not equal. So let's see if we can do the calculation. First we'll do the degrees of freedom. So here's our variance components. Sample variance is divided by uh, degrees of freedom. And so we get these two numbers, so they stay not being the same. Uh, and then our degrees of freedom. Um, so take those two components, add them together and square them, divided by the square of each of those components, divided by its degrees of freedom. And we put it all together, we get 13.01 for our degrees of freedom. Now some people say we could round this. We could round down, but that's not always possible. If it were 13.5 we'd be stuck. Okay. Now it turns out that most software like Excel or R will let us actually calculate this for oddball degrees of freedom. So for instance, in R, I can use the QT command and, and get this exact uh, critical value, which is 1.771. So here's my test statistic. I'll take the difference of the means. I'll divide it by the square root of the sum of the variance components. And when I do that, I get 1.66 which says, ooh, this is less than the critical value. So do not reject the null hypothesis. Okay, weak evidence. It's a nice theory, but now which one do I use? Which one do I use? Well, learn it out. Use the unequal variances version. Okay, the equal variance one actually 
to be honest, requires you to check whether or not the variances are equal. So that's two tests instead of one. Why not just jump in and do the one test? Okay. Equal variances is okay for small samples. And I'm going to say wait for ANOVA because you're going to see it used in small samples. Now, most software does both and defaults to the unequal variances. So that's the one that all the cool kids are using these days. Now, there's another t-test for comparing dependent samples. And this one's known as the paired t-test. Okay, what's the, what's the idea here? The idea here is that <clears throat> measurements are not independent because measurements are taken from either the same subject or very, very similar subjects. A good example is a crossover experiment. And so in a crossover experiment, we have two treatments, A and B. We have <clears throat> a set of subjects who are randomized into two treatment groups, in this case, blue and red, uh, green. And <clears throat> in the first phase, one group is given treatment A, the other group is given treatment B, and then there's a measurement. So here's a measurement. And so this will be for each individual I, this will be measurement number one. We have a period called the washout period, in which their subjects are allowed to get back to some sort of equilibrium. And then we flip the treatments. So treatment B is now assigned to the group that had A, and treatment A is now assigned to the group that had B. We go through another period, we take our separate measurement, and so now we have, for each individual I, we have measurement number two, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some kind of comparison involving these. How does that work? Well, measurements on the same individual are not independent, not, I have to re reiterate that, not independent. But measurements on different individuals are independent. So we get around that by comparing the individual differences. That is, we look at the difference between the new measurement, the two measurements, subject by subject. Turns out this is a very powerful design since it eliminates subject to subject variation. Okay. And again, wait for ANOVA. We're going to see exactly how this works a little bit later in our, this series of lectures. But here is, here's the procedure. For each subject I, we form a difference, D sub I. We then calculate statistics on D sub I, basically the mean and sample variance. And then we conduct a single sample t-test using the statistics on the differences. There's n differences, so this follows a t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. So for two measurements on each of n subjects, n differences, and the degrees of freedom is n minus one. Let's look at an example. We'd like to compare two different types of radiation dosimeters, and so we have workers Eight workers wear both dosimeters uh, for a period and see how the readings work. And then we tabulate them worker by worker and calculate the differences. Now notice some differences are positive and some differences are negative. Nothing wrong with that. From these, we'll calculate the sample statistics. There were eight differences. The average difference was minus 0.72. And the standard deviation, I'm sorry, variance was 13, 12.3. The critical value for a two-sided test, seven degrees of freedom, is plus or minus 2.365. The test statistic, so it's going to be negative, and the test statistic works out to be 0 0.5857, okay? which does not exceed 
the critical value. And so do not reject page not. No evidence of difference.